Okay, so for those of you guys that do not know what a demo slam is, we are going to go through just exactly how this is going to work. Okay, so welcome to our first ever EPW Demo Slam for our share time today. Here's how this is going to work. If you want to share your idea, you're going to use the raise hand feature in the Zoom part in the reactions, okay? That way we'll know that you have an idea to share and you will be called on to unmute and share your idea. You will have two minutes that I'm gonna be timing. I will unmute myself and say one minute at the mark, 30 seconds, and then we'll do a countdown from five. At the end of it, it is three, two, one, slam. Your time is up and that's all you've got. You don't get to go over. If you keep going, we're gonna mute you. You got two minutes, that's it. Once you have shared your idea, you'll be getting a message in the chat box that is going to give you a link to a form that we're going to ask for you to fill out to document all of what you shared. So you're going to put your idea, your name and contact info, and all of that, that entire document will then go out at the end of the conference in order for everyone to have access to it and be reminded of what it is you presented on and for them to then be able to reach out to you in case they have questions for you. Okay, so again, if you want to be able to actually share something, it is the raise hand feature in the reactions part. Okay, so before we get started, does anyone have a question as to how we're going to attempt this? Again, this is all new tech that we're trying out for this to see how it goes. So my understanding, um, Steve put the question in the chat about if you can share screen. Yes, you will have, if you're sharing, you will be able to share your screen as well. So you'll be spotlighted, you'll be unmuted and have two minutes to share, either share your screen or just share your idea, just you. So if you've got an idea, I think we're just gonna kick it off and get going. So I don't see any raise hands in the raise hand feature because that's what, yes, Julie Zamora. First one up, go for it. Sorry, I'm in the car, but um, one thing that I do with my students is a card competition. Uh, the students are in groups and they run to a deck of cards. They have to bring one card back to their group and complete the corresponding exercise. Um, the team with the most cards wins. You cannot run for the next card until everyone in your group finishes. So that's like where the teamwork encouragement comes in. Joker is a 10 second rest. Uh, you can do this with Uno as well. Uh, you just have to assign each card an exercise or activity. I did do this in distance learning via Zoom. You can use breakout rooms and there it's a screen share digital deck of cards. One minute uh, left. And it's the same rules as above. Um, you want to have whiteboards with the cards and the exercise so the students can see it as a guide. Three, two, one, slam. Yes, and that is how it is done. So if you do not have use the full two minutes, that's fine. You do not have to. So um, you, if you have an idea, go ahead and just put your raise hand feature up so we know who is ready with an idea. And if there's more than what up, we'll just get going through them. Lori Bifarella. Hey, how you doing, Jess? All right, two, two minutes. Excellent. Here we go. Two, go. Uh, um, we run a, an after school program and we call it Fun Fitness. And it's all about kids choice. Um, as adults, we all choose our own fitness path. There are some people that flock to yoga and others like doing CrossFit. And our kids, our students are in such a structured world where everywhere they they're go, everything is structured. So for them to have the choice of what their fitness is, is a, a wonderful moment for them. So the day one, we just make this huge list of everything they want to do. And then they have uh, the, they meet after school twice a week for a month. 
and we just go through the list and check everything off and it makes fitness fun. It's student choice and it's extra activity time in their in their day and in their week too. So three, two, one. Thank you, Lori. Elise. Okay, so in the same way that we intentionally plan learning opportunities for play, we need to intentionally plan for our students to think critically about equity and justice. So we don't want them to learn through just like social osmosis and health and PE were skills based. So as a content area, we can learn, we can lean in, as a content area, we learn, lean into modeling and, and conversations and actively engaging students in personal uh, and relationship management skills. So how do we do this through an A-bar lens? I have some resources for you. Let's see where to go. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen and... Okay, so here are the high school standards for um, standard four. Um, so these things can be like kind of big to think about, but I've recently found uh, One minute left. Uh, outcomes and scenarios. So these are ways that we can break down some of those social emotional learning objectives to teach through an ABAR lens. And um, right now I'm finishing up a book called Start Here, Start Now. I can't stop talking about it. And what I love about it is the online resources that even if you didn't buy the book, you can access. And it shows you how to organize big topics. So like if you wanted to talk about what's happening with the Olympics right now and Simone Biles like, evaluations um, and like what do your students need to understand to understand what you're trying to talk about through that. And here's another one is a quick summary of what we're studying. So this is like for kids to understand what we're doing um, with our social justice focus and how can it be applied to, you know, whatever unit you're teaching. Three, two, one, slam. Nice. Wendy Jones, I saw you doing your hand. Okay. Um, so uh, in an effort to um, engage my classroom teachers, with my families, with my students. For second grade, what I did was I bought these little sock monkeys that had Velcro little hands and feet. And I would send a bag that had a sock monkey and a journal that had a prompt for the parents. So the students would write into, the, into this, this journal. They had it for a week. They would take the sock monkey and they would take it to their swim lesson. So the sock monkey would sit on the side of the pool. They would um, put their sock monkey on their wrist during soccer practice. They would, um, uh, one, one person talked about how they went to the, they went to Walmart and bought a jump rope and the sock monkey jumped with them and they just wrote about it. And, um, and then I would show it to the second grade teachers. I go, look at all the writing that your students are doing. And they were overwhelmed by the amount of one minute ownership they had with their sharing of their lives. And, um, when they would return my journal back to me, they got a sock monkey pencil. And, um, that was just one of those really beautiful moments. Slam. Nice. Steve Reifman. Hi, everybody. Great to see you. During the first full week of the school year, I'm a classroom teacher, by the way, fourth grade. During the first full week of the school year, the most important thing my students and I do is write our class mission statement. I've learned over the years that it's the most powerful thing that we can do to establish a sense of purpose in our classroom, establish an expectation level, begin to build teamwork, and begin to build habits of character. Now, I have the same group of kids um, all day, and I know it's much harder for physical educators who have multiple groups and limited time. So my new favorite idea to share with physical educators is to try to get the same bang for the buck with the class visual, either doing one visual with each of your classes, with each grade level, or with the school as a whole. And during your first few class periods, or maybe one per week, ending class with just a couple minute conversation, addressing some basic questions. Who are we? Why is it important to come to school to learn? What are we de determined to accomplish this year? What kind of class do we want to be? One uh, minute. What, what actions do we need to do to bring all these ideas to life? And then their answers can be represented as visuals, which we put together and refer to throughout the year. So this is the first one we did a couple of years ago. Very simple. The idea that we're all trying to climb to higher levels, we do it together. You see the two kids reaching for each other, 
light bulb means we're all bright with great ideas. Lightning bolt means that we have a lot of energy and passion and enthusiasm. So you can accomplish a lot, come up with big ideas that have 30 seconds. staying power um, with simple visuals. This is the one we did the next year. We went a little, uh, a little more elaborate. And then this past year, it was done more as a shield. So coming up with a visual to establish who you are and where you want to go and using it throughout the year as a reference is I believe the most powerful thing we could do with our kids at the beginning of the year. Oh, five seconds of spare, Steve. Well timed. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Kim Kuzan, yes. Hi, everybody. Um, at the beginning of the year, I give every single one of my kids uh, a power bead. So they get a chain and they get a bead. We're the leopards, so they get a paw bead. And the paw represents the fact that they have the power to determine what kind of experience they want to have. The bead. So it's very ceremonial. They get to choose their chain, they choose what color paw they want. We sit in a circle and I have uh, candles, you know, the electrical candle thingies. So it's like a ceremony. They put their bead on. I can get my kids to do anything for a bead. It's ridiculous. It, I mean, these stupid little pony beads, special beads. Um, and it could be random acts of kindness. It could be showing improvement. It could be meeting a goal. It could be birthday. It can be absolutely anything. And I've even gotten to where my parents want to do parent contracts. If my kid won't do their homework, my kid won't clean their room. So we'll set up a contract where if the kid starts cleaning their room, they get a bead for cleaning their room. It's just between the kid and the parent. So you can take it as far as you want to go. I did it during the Thank you. I did it during the pandemic as well. So I had this huge whiteboard with everybody's name and a little baggie and I would put beads in there every time they earned them. And every time we had a pickup day, they really looked forward to their little baggie of their beads that they got. So kind of a little motivational tool that works really well. Awesome. Thank you, Kim. Okay, so if anyone else, else has an idea, make sure you use the raise hand feature. If you can't find that, do something else to get my attention. Oh, Stacy, there you go. All right. Um, this will be my first year teaching PE. I've been a classroom teacher for three years. But I, uh, one of my favorite things um, in the classroom in teaching with Linda McGee is that she's really great at pulling in teachers to um, understand what she's doing and to integrate what she's doing into our lessons. So something we did together was to um, she does a week of pedometers where students record their steps and she talks a lot about goal setting and so then I can talk about goal setting in my class and then I created this document where kids can use it to record their steps throughout the day uh, oops that doesn't make uh, um, and then it will automatically update the graph below so I teach my graphing unit when she does pedometers because both are about a week and then the um, this will automatically graph their steps. And then we talk about line plots and change over time. So I created this document One minute. It in the chat. So here are the teacher steps. So you're going to delete this yellow square when you're done reading the instructions. But you're going to replace um, cells A3 to A7 with your class times that you want students to record. And it'll automatically update the graph. And then to share. You go share, and then you're going to copy the link. And at the end of the link, you're going to delete everything after um, what it says edit and replace it with copy. And then it'll do a force copy. An example of the force copy is what I use to share this with you. And this 25 is seconds. We'll change their name. So they should change their name here. And they should double click here to change their name as well, where there's the underscore. And that's it. Awesome. Thank you. Slam on that one. Okay. I don't see any other hands up right now. So again, it can be any type of idea whatsoever. A tech tip, a attention getter. Okay. Kayla, go for it. All right. So this year, um, our school and district decided no more promotion graduation ceremonies for our sixth grade students. And that with just the stress of, you know, transferring from online to in-person, I was like, you know, our students need a class mural. So 
we made a class mural happen. Um, I gave them ideas. It was just the sixth grade students. And I basically asked them, because we're the bears, of what does it mean to be a bear or what legacy do you want to leave behind? So we had this blank wall that just needed artwork. And using Pear Deck, the students submitted their ideas um, of what that meant to them. And then they had about a week to create their own design um, and own mural. We only had two designs submitted. However, um, it worked super well. Um, Minute. Yeah, let's see, let me show you the final one. because It's super cool. Yeah, so then we uh, spaced it out whether I got there super early to trace it on the wall. And then I had students fill in with paint all of the artworks, kind of like paint by number. And, oh my goodness, where's the final picture? I lost it. Oh my goodness. It was saved on here. That's sad. It basically was painted this uh, mural on our wall that's going to be there for every year. 20 seconds. So an idea to have each class be remembered and encourage everybody else. Excellent. Thank you, Kayla. Okay, uh, Matt. Hello. All right. So I am going to screen share really quickly and move things around. Um, on uh, yesterday, we talked about, and I think Kim just talked about things that the students will do. I created uh, stickers for my students, and I used the simple little Avery labels because we had a bunch of them at school. And it'll be amazing of what your kids will do for a sticker. So I have these, I only give out a handful a day uh, to kind of help. Um, I also created one that said I was a good listener in PE, especially for my kindergarten students the first day. Uh, and they uh, just peel them off. And it's amazing how everybody wants one two seconds after you give the first one out. And then it's a good opportunity to say, I'm gonna try to catch you being good later today uh, and I'll give you an opportunity. And then uh, we keep doing that. So uh, I try to wean myself off of it at the beginning of the school year um, as we go so that they're not used to only working for stickers. And then those days that you come back from breaks or you're just having a bad day, you pull them back out again and then they kind of get back on the right track. One minute. So with that, three, two, one, slam. Slam, excellent. Okay, so I'm calling Mark out here because I see where you're at. So I know your time is precious here with us. So Mark is joining us from the top of a ropes course here. Do you, you got two minutes. If you got, I'm making you share an idea here. You got two minutes, you're on the spot. Two minutes, first off, thanks for having me. Uh, yeah, I am 35 feet up at Camp Riverbend. Good to be with you guys. Um, so my share today is what I learned over the last year is the value of human connection. Get your students engaged in small conversations. Uh, I used We Connect cards by Chad Littlefield. I used Ubuntu cards, anything that they can hold in their hands that helps break the ice. Uh, or in this day and age with no touch team building and they don't want to touch objects, you lay them on the ground, they pick something they can relate to and the conversations just absolutely flow. Uh, so I learned the value of human connection. It, improves ev it improved everything this year for me in the virtual world. So um, I know I'm way under two minutes, but I just wanted to share that. And we'll talk more about connection during my session tomorrow, eight o'clock. Awesome, thank you, Mark. No problem. Thanks okay. for having me. Aaron, yay. Hi everyone. I wanted to uh, get on my computer and not my phone, but mine is just really short and um, sweet. On Zoom this year, the kids love telling jokes. And so we would share jokes for, I don't know, three to five minutes. Kids would do it, tell them in breakout rooms. We'd tell them all together. And so when I finally went back in person in April, just one day a week, what I would do is I would have all my kids that were still distance learning PE send me jokes. And then I'd have them vote, which they thought was the funniest. And when I was at school on Tuesday, I would write in chalk a joke for each grade level. And the kids, even though they were distance learning, 
they still rode bikes, they rode skateboards, they went to soccer practice, they went to baseball practice at school. So then they would go out to the blacktop where we have PE and they would look for their grade levels joke. Luckily it never rained. So the jokes didn't get washed out the next day. Well, it rained, but not on the day that they, on Tuesdays, it never rained like on a Tuesday to a Wednesday. And so they would go and they would read the joke. And then the next time that we would have PE together on Zoom, I'd say, all right, first graders, who got the first grade joke? And, you know, everyone would go and read it. And, and it was just a really fun thing because then one of the kids would say, oh, that was my joke that you picked. Um, so it was a, a neat thing to, to leave jokes on the blacktop in chalk. So that's my thing. I also left workouts too for families to do um, that weren't in school. It was just kind of a neat way to use chalk to talk to kids that I wasn't going to see in person. Um, that's all. Thanks, everyone. Awesome. Thank everyone. you, Erin. <laughs> okay. Um, Shelby, you're up. All right. So um, I'm a third year, just finished my third year teaching. And something I started as my first year teaching was having students sign a book that um, so that way I could look back like, oh, like, oh, I had this student. Um, and cool thing was this year I taught middle school. So I got to see some of them as seventh and eighth graders. And I was like, hey, remember when you were in my class? Look at this. Well, some of my students were online. So we did a digital memory book where I just wanted them to share um, their favorite memory. Mine included Kahoot, breakout rooms, learning about stress and anxiety, and of course, teaching pickleball because it's a really big deal. And sharing um, my personal experiences with my students. They, every, every check-in, I'd be like, hey, what'd you do over the weekend? And if they didn't hear me say pickleball, they would think I was not their teacher and I'm an imposter. So creating those connections with One my minute and also sharing a digital memory book with them was a lot of fun to do. Awesome, thank you, Shelby. Lori. This is a, a blast from the past, but I'm also looking forward and I'm looking forward to doing this uh, again um, in a post COVID uh, environment. We, I know a lot of schools have uh, father daughter dances, mother son dances. Our school started probably about five or six years ago, something that's called a someone special dance. And they realized the dynamics, the family dynamics are so diverse that they did not want to label it a father, daughter, or mother, son. So the children are allowed to bring someone who's special in their life. And we would kick off the dance. We'd have our dance unit start at the beginning of the month and we would teach the students dances that they get to teach to their parents. So we didn't do any of the traditional cha-cha slides or, or the Macarena. We didn't do any of that because we saved that for the parents to, or there's someone special to share with the students. So the night of the dance, we bring in a, an awesome DJ because Brandon Herwick, he really rocks it. <laughs> and he comes in and does a little workshop with the kids during the day with some fun details. And then he just, he's the uh, DJ for the night and it's a really great event. So if you guys are going back into environment where they'd like to do a dance, I, I would really love to you to share this idea with your community. It's, it's super sweet and slam. Thank you, Lori. Okay, Kathy Jones. Uh... Hey everyone. Um, so we're talking a lot about connections and making kids feel special and um, like building class community. And so this year um, when I had my students back in person, but they were still on Google Classroom, I sent um, my fourth graders a Google form and said that they could um, pick three of their favorite songs. Um, and if I could find them on Spotify and if I vetted them and they were um, school appropriate, then we would add it to our class playlist. So um, I kept trying to figure out ways to do it. And finally with the Google form, it made it really easy because then I just had a spreadsheet. And once I um, listened to the song on Spotify, then I would just highlight it, add it to that class's playlist. And it was super interesting to um, see what kind of music that they liked. And then they would get super excited in class if their song got played and 
and then it made me connect with some of the kids and um some songs I love some One songs minute. I hated um and so it was just a fun way to um to build community so um I hope to do that again this coming year so awesome. thank you Kathy uh we got Bo Phillips all right um let me get my screen ready okay so um when everything went down with the pandemic technology wise I lost all connection with my students um, from March to the end of the year, I never even saw them. So when we came back, I found this piece called mentimeter.com and it was how we basically started every every class. We'd have a question of the day. I did trial it out back in March and April with some classes and it did work, but I would just post a question of the day as kids came into the Zoom and slowly they would ask, uh, you know, add responses. And it was all anonymous. So that was great. Kids kind of came out of their shells. They would, um, um, share their responses. Of course, it's a little slow to loading, but like, here's one, what is your favorite after school snack? And so the responses would be just coming up in live time. And it kind of started some conversations. Um, every now and then you'd see someone say like cookies, and then they put their name next to it, just because they really were proud of cookies. Um, but, you know, we had some, you know, better questions. And then one, one of the better ones was I did, um, it's like a Q&A. So it's just like a of a rapid fire questions to ask me. And so these questions would pop up on the screen and I would scroll through them. I'm gonna go really fast as you see the video, but I just started answering these questions as they came up. So they would ask me, you know, like, what's your favorite sport? And I would say golf, um, you know, the next question, oh, I love pizza. Um, no, I don't, but I know the game. Um, I like old oldies, um, you know, 18 years. No, I don't have any kids. So I skipped that 30 one, seconds. Um, you know, and so we did, Every now and then, do you guys want to do one with your teachers, or does anybody feel comfortable being the subject here? Um, but with Mentimeter, you could rank things. So, like, you know, what what was your favorite thing to have as a superpower, or your favorite kind of candy? You can insert GIFs when these things are up there. So some of these things were actually moving on the screen, but it was just a great way to stay connected. Like Mark Five, said, connections were key. Four, so three, three two, two, one, one slam. Nice. Okay, Steph Sandino, what you got for us? All right, everybody. Uh, what does that mean? Unmute yourself. Okay, I'm already unmuted. So, um, like everybody else, um, I got thrown a little bit of a curveball this year or this past year. So, I was distance learning for the full year. Um, and not just my school, I got all seven middle school sites. So, that was cool. Um, and interesting. Um, so I, had, I needed to, because I wasn't going to have my students, um, I needed a way to kind of um, know who my kids were um, in a very quick amount of time. And so um, I think this is going to be very short, I think. Let me see if I can share my screen. Awesome. Um, so some of you may have already seen this, but we created our own virtual rooms in which I had my students decorate it with 10 symbols of um, their choice that showcase their identity and their passions. And we used Google Slides for this. Um, one of the pictures had to include themselves. One minute. Some of them used a bit emoji. Some of them used a real life picture of themselves and at least one physical activity. So I showed them an example of mine, which look like that. So I told them a little bit about myself or you know, my roots are from, what I like to do on my free time, all that good stuff. And um, they created really cool ones. I had them present it online. So they actually had to unmute and talk to the class. Um, so I like created a little carousel and um, each day I had about three presenters. 30 seconds. And so I have a compilation of um, all my students and what they liked. And I got really good ideas on, you know, them liking anime, which I had no idea was a thing, but it totally is. Um, and, you know, places they like to visit, things they like to do, instruments, art, you name it. It was really cool. Great learning experience. I think Five, we'll do it again four, next year. Three, two, one. Yeah. Okay. We have got Matt. Yeah, I thought it would be really cool to uh, bring in oldie but a goodie. I got this out of a multicultural game book many years ago. It's called Shadow Tag. Uh, it comes from the continent of Africa. I don't remember specifically which country, 
very simple little tag game. Everybody's it. That's my favorite type of tag game. Uh, if you step on somebody's shadow, you get a point. And the goal is to see how many shadows you can step on before the end of class. Uh, great warm up. And I know that with all of the COVID stuff and everything that's going on, maybe a good activity to remind us for a warm up going back into person here in the fall. So three, two, one. And then Steph, you're still sharing. Okay. Anyone else coming up? Jen, Jess, I'll show something. Go for um, it, Kim. Okay. So today, actually, we, we got a little creative again. Um, I teach adaptive PE, so um, my students were doing some tennis today. So we take our little lollipop noodles and we put them into a huge noodle. And then we take our big noodle and we wrap it around the back of their wheelchair. So then it comes out under their chair and they can hold on to it and they can hit. Uh, another adaptation we did today was um, we took the horseshoes that came from a dollar tree set and we just put it inside the horse, the, uh, the smaller pool noodle. And then it becomes, oh, I can't get it back in. <laughs> and then it becomes a handle and also one of my students today was using the handle to hit the, the little mini beach balls. So that's a good adaptation if you have, have any kids in wheelchairs or in walkers or something and they can't hold a regular racket. One minute. So good adaptations for them. Nice. Thank you, Kim. <laughs> okay. Any others use the raise hand feature because I can't actually see everybody. So if you use the raise hand, it pops you up to the top so I can tell that you're wanting to share. Oh, come on. I see people in here that I know have amazing ideas. Okay, Kim Kusan, what else you got for us? Super quickie. Um, at the beginning of the year, I wanted my kids to have some equipment and classroom teachers getting equipment supplies left and right. So one of the things that I got was every single kid got a pool noodle, cut it in half. And I always wanted to do fitness drumming, but we never had the bucks by the whole official thingy. So we just, every kid got two pool noodles, half of a, you know, cut it in half. And we did fitness drumming with pool noodles, just hitting the floor. They could hit their chair, their desk, if they had an exercise. Well, oh my God, it was like my favorite thing. It was so much fun. And then there was a million other things you could do with the noodle. So Kim, when you brought that up, it's like, ooh, noodle. So much you can do with noodles. Excellent. Thank you. Three, two, one, slam. Okay, Lori Bifrella. All right, this is just a little share, and I can't remember who talked about the chalk, but and the value of chalk. Um, and our teaching space, we because we're in uh, Western New York, we're pretty much indoors uh, the majority of the year, and getting whiteboards and having poster paper is kind of a pain. So my coworker and I just started using chalk right on the mats and we write right on the mats and you can wipe it down at the end of the day. And it's just a, a quick little, you know, a little hack on getting information on the walls. So chalk is great. And awesome. Slam. Thank you, Larry. Okay, we got George. Hey, everybody. Uh, I, I really appreciate Kim O'Hara's uh, presentation today. She really talked about how you use shared data or percentages or statistical information to the students. We need to tell them why. And we got to remind them to question everything. You know, was this done in the 1800s, 1800s? Just like she's not a big fan of the BMI, I'm not a big fan of it either. You know, uh, just let them know that your opinion, their opinions all matter. And then you get to a better consensus on information together. And it's not always your opinion, your knowledge. It's a little bit of everybody's and you make a really strong community with your students. Well, three, two, one, slam. Slam, thank you. Okay, Elise. All right, 
So um, this is like, uh, I don't know about any of you, but like once I start my teaching day, like it's just like straight through. So if I'm going to read emails, it needs to happen in like the very beginning of the day or the very end of the day. But also in the beginning of the day, I need to like set up the, um, the set up everything I'm doing for the day. So I learned about multiple inboxes. And so I'm going to share you share with you guys how this works. So the philosophy is this is my um, school email, which I have not read all week or really gone through. So the idea is if it's going to take longer than two minutes, you just you file it for later, because right now you're trying to just see all your emails for the day. So like, this is, you know, just junk, 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 junk. So this might be of interest to me. So maybe I want to keep an eye on this. And then I take it out of my inbox. Yay, SUNY Cortland has a day. Um, so I go through and what will eventually happen 50 seconds. is um, I will go like all the things that are still in my inbox are all of the junk. And then everything else is sorted into, and this is like my workflow. So these are the things that need to, that are top priority for getting done. Keep an eye on is like afterwards, like when, once I finish that list, I get into these things. And then this month, this week and swimming. So prioritizing your emails so that you create a workflow with multiple inboxes. Three, two, one, slam. Slam. Man, I wish I had that sooner. Okay. <laughs> Um, Scott and Willie, I don't know which one of you is talking, but go for it. Okay, so um, both Scott and I have used this strategy. We have uh, Finkel Hopper, our fitness friend, who is very similar to what Wendy shared, except it's based on a book called Finkel, Finkel Hopper Frog. And it's about a frog who um, goes out and tries uh, to uh, take on jogging and then through this process gets bullied and teased. Frogs don't run, they hop. Um, well, actually jump, but anyway. So um, anyway, he ends up you know, finding out what is really his best way of moving and the, the preferred way of exercising. So the students get a bag, they get a Finkel Hopper Frog, the book. They also get a book that's called, I Will Never Not Ever Eat a Tomato. And we have read these books to the primary classes before, and then they get the book, they get the frog, they get the journal, and they bring it home. And for the week, they have to uh, write about what Finkelhopper did with them that week. So they're encouraged to go play with their family, go out for a healthy meal, take pictures, One write minute. a journal. And then when they come back at the end of the week, uh, we hand it off to another student, but they first have to read their um, or we read um, at their kinder or first grade uh, the story and they get to tell about their experience of what it was like to exercise with Finkelhopper. And uh, like Wendy said, it's a way to connect with students. It's a way for them to read um, and also just, you know, get to know your students. Anything else, Scott? Yes, they had a great job doing it and they like that. 30 seconds. Well, and three, two, two one. one. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Excellent. So as a quick reminder, if you have something to share, go ahead and use the raise hand feature in the Zoom so I can see that you've got something to share. You'll have two minutes. There is screen sharing capabilities if that is something you want. Okay, Bo. Uh, I've got another organizing idea and I'm going to give credit to uh, Julie Backen. She's from my district. So both of our schools use something called Symbolo this year. And it was kind of like just an organization, a library of icons for different websites and tools and resources. And so I just used one icon for me and it took you to this page. And so I had, this was my symbol of homepage. And so I had these doors and behind each door were all my resources. So as I just kept on getting more and more stuff, rather than have it sit in my Google Drive, I wanted to have it be accessible, not just to me, but to all my students. So if you click on each one of these doors, I kind of had uh, different titles at the top and I'll kind of walk you through them but like this is my theme room and so if you clicked on that door each one of these icons takes you to a whole nother you know you're going down another rabbit hole of activities so I had things with, throughout the years we had themes uh, this room just got overwhelmed but these are all resources that I mean I didn't create these these were all shared and these were like just invaluable for students because I had so many kids that um, never got to leave their homes. They're, you know, they lived in trailers. And so these were things that they could do in their bedrooms. They could do things in chairs. Um, I had a calm room with all these different uh, breathing activities. This is one with all uh, cross-curricular with books and movement. 
um, a room uh, stuff about me. Um, and so it was just a great way of organizing all those resources rather than just being sitting in my Google Drive. They were there for students and I kept on telling the kids, reminding them all summer, this is a library of resources for you that's available. You don't need a library card for this place. It's yours, okay? Um, and it'll be something that I keep using and building on. So it's a great seconds. way of organizing resources. So thank you to Julie for starting it. And I just kind of really like copied her room. Um, I've added some stuff about me in here, but then these are resources that you might have some of your own things on here. Um, but uh, thank you to everybody that shared. Uh, and that's that's a, a symbol organization Three, of resources. Two, Three, two, one, one. Slayer. Awesome. Okay, Linda. Okay, I am recently retired, but I was a teacher at a K-3 school, and I, um, sorry, I'm reading messages on here. Okay, so um, I like to have my older kids help out with my younger kids, and this year was a real challenge with that because we couldn't mix cohorts. So um, the chalk idea, I do pathways with my kids, so I had my third graders work in small groups to make pathways and they chucked them on the blacktop and I had uh, multiple classes. So we had multiple areas of um, pathways and then the first graders came in and, and did those pathways. And the other thing that was pretty cool about that was at recess time this year, our kids were assigned different areas for recess. And so I heard that during recess, kids were using those pathways um, as something to do for activity. So it turned one out minute. a pretty fun thing. So three, two, one. one. Slam. Thank you, Linda. Okay, any other last minutes in here? Because it is getting close to our wrap up time. If you have ideas, this might be your last shot here. Okay, so the document that those of you guys that shared entered your information on, that will be pushed out to everyone at the end of the workshop. It'll be in the resource document that has all the resources from all the presenters from all the sessions. So that will be available to you to go back to. On there is the contact information of the people who presented it. So if it comes up or like you can't remember what it was or you want more information or you want to start a conversation, make use of that. That is what this is about. Like this is now, you are now part of this EPW family and we're really, really good at taking care of each other and making sure to share those resources and start those conversations, build those lasting friendships. So please do make use of that. Um, and I believe we're just about set. So today at three o'clock, we do at, again, Pacific time, Three o'clock Pacific time, we have a social tonight, which is going to be Goose Chase and Kahoot. We would love to see you guys join us on there. Um, and then we have our last stuff going on tomorrow. Tomorrow is a packed day, like way super packed day full of amazing stuff. So please make sure you check your email in the morning to get those links and whatnot. Um, our website has all of the YouTube video links that will be up and good to go. And we are so thankful for you joining our family. And thank you for the, these amazing ideas. I'm already like, okay, I've got to remember that one and that one. And Bo, I'm going to be talking to you later about some of that stuff that you shared. And I think we are good to go unless anyone has anything else to add. Matt, do you have anything else to add? No. Nope. Okay. Here we go. Thank you for joining us today. Woohoo! It worked. <laughs> Thanks for being part of the first ever ever virtual demo slam. Good job, and we will see all of you hopefully later today at the social. Bye, everybody. Thank you for attending the 48th annual Elementary Physical Education Workshop. We're glad you were here. Please follow us on our social media platforms. EPEW can be found on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Please check out our website for links to more great sessions. Just go to epew-cp.weebly.com and click on the virtual EPEW 2021 tab at the top and scroll down. EPEW 2021 Educators Assemble would not be possible without the support and dedication from the amazing EPW committee. 
The committee has been hard at work for months preparing for this workshop. Thank you to Linda McGee, Barbara Gratton, Scott Wilson, Stephanie Sandino, Julie Miller, Jessica Monlux, Kayla Aylman, Shelby Lozano, Andrea Chavez, Scott Townsend, and Cindy Chase. Thank you for attending EPEW, where our motto is, come to learn, leave as family.